Okay, so you guys may not know this, but Joe Biden met with Philadelphia rap legend Freeway. You know, to talk about doing things to help the community there in Philadelphia. And, you know, you know, I'm not a big Biden guy. I'm not a big Biden guy. He, he, I'm not a small Biden guy. He not, I don't like him at all. He's not my cup of tea. But he got 90% of the vote in our community. 90% of us voted for him. Him and Kamala Harris just released their 100 day plan their first 100 day plan and within that first 100 days there's absolutely and I'm talking about like it's no debate there's absolutely nothing in there for the African American community which is not a surprise because they never Cube said that. Cube said he tried to meet with them before the election <laughs> to get something done, and they ignored him. They gave him the stiff arm. And Trump was like, all right, let's work on something. Let's let's put something together. And Trump came up with, like, what? I think it was $500 billion of um, capital to be infused into the African-American community through this, through that, through this and that, along with everything else he'd already done. Funding HBCUs, opportunity zones, and those opportunity zones is something that you can't just shake a stick at because rappers use the opportunity zones. You know? A, a very notable rapper that y'all all love, you use those opportunity zones to um start what well, he was uh, he was building the empire, but it was cut short. Um, but you know. Those opportunity zones are a big thing. A lot of people are using them. A lot of brothers are using them. You just don't know about them because they're not famous. They may be wealthy. They may be entrepreneurs, but they're not famous, so you don't know them. But, um, yeah. Well, anyway, um, yeah. So Trump had a bunch of stuff for us. We didn't want it. Joe Biden said he, according to Cube, that he ain't got he ain't he wasn't even worth meeting with 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 us about nothing because we if you if you don't vote for him you're not black so he met with Freeway now Freeway's son just passed recently and they're being very vague about how Freeway's son passed and that's their business so we can only speculate but his son was into the street life and into the, you know. As according to Freeway, popping pills and using, you know, using different, doing different things, okay? So, his son was into the street life and everything that comes with it. So, we don't know how he died. I, I looked it up on the gun memorial. I didn't see anything. Um, but, whatever. So, Joe Biden sat down with Freeway. And let's get into... You know, Freeway talks about the conversation they had. So let's get into it. People that reached out to me and, and told me that they heard my story, he was interested in meeting me, you know, uh, because we share a lot of we share some similarities. So, you know, I went to meet him. And, you know, when we talked, I felt the sincerity in him. You know, like, I'm a good judge of character. I'm from the hood. I've been all over the world. I'm a good judge of character. Like, when I, when I deal with people, I'm pretty... I pretty much know what I'm dealing with when I deal with a person, you know. Let me tell you what is in the bill. And I'll let you all decide whether or not this is weak. To get down here a compendium of the things that are in the bill. One, the death penalty. It provides 53 death penalty offenses. Weak as can be, you know? We do everything but hang people for jaywalking in this bill. That's weak stuff. 
So when I hear Freeway talk about Joe Biden, this great guy, and he can feel it because he's from the hood and he can tell somebody sincere. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Joe Biden's a politician, man. He reigned terror on the black community. And I just don't understand how you could, how street guys could support Joe Biden. You got all these ex-street guys supporting Joe Biden. Remember, Donald Trump's a racist. And all the rappers mentioned him in, the, in, his, in their raps. All the rappers went to his parties. All the rappers, anytime he was around, was running to take pictures with him, running to ch chop it up with him. All the activists were running to chop it up with him. All the activists was taking his money to fund their activism. But now he's a racist because he decided to run for president as a Republican. And another group also likes him. So that's another thing about Donald Trump that makes him racist. So because some racist white people like him too, that means that if you're black and you like him, you're a racist. Well, by that logic, you can extrapolate that to a lot of things. Because I like a lot of things that racist white people like. I like sugar. <laughs> okay? I like things with sugar in them. I like bacon. I like the company of a woman. <laughs> I like sleep. But it's cool, Joe Biden can do the crime bill, and he can destroy black families, and, 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 and we're not talking about, and this is the thing that a lot of people understand, I'm not saying that brothers didn't deserve to go to jail for the drugs they were selling back in the day, and the stuff they was doing in the community. Did you hear what Biden said? He was talking about life sentences and death penalties. For black people for stuff that was going on in every community I get it I mean yeah you do you do the crime you do the time but he's talking about locking people up for life and giving them the, the things like the death penalty and things like that he was very heavy-handed with our community as opposed to you know the, the popular the general population so when freeway says he's such a great guy okay why do street guys get to get to get to support the guy who who gave us the mass mass incarceration bill? Why do street guys get to get, and, and still get and still be street guys? It seemed like that's worse than snitching to me. To me, if you're a street guy and you support the guy who gave us the mass incarceration bill, that's worse than snitching. sincerity in, in him when we talk, you know, so, you know, I look forward to working with him and, you know, uh, trying to strategize and, and find ways that we can help our community, you know, the best that I can. Yeah. What was that conversation like, you know, father to father, strip away, you're a big time rapper, strip away, he's, a, he's going to be our president. Yeah, that's exactly how it was. Like, at that moment, it was stripped away. It was two fathers two men like i didn't even see color we must make the streets safer i don't care why someone is a malefactor in society i don't care why someone is antisocial. i don't care why they become a sociopath we have an obligation to cordon them off from the rest of society try to help them try to change the behavior that's why we do in this bill we have drug treatment and we have other treatments to try to deal with it but they are in jail does that sound like a a caring loving sincere person i don't care why now they know that these democratic policies 
the welfare and the removing the black men from the home in the early 70s and the 60s. The, the terrible schools in these democratically run cities. All the different policies that destroyed the black family and destroyed these these inner city um, homes and led to these boys. So many of them, because some of them was going to be thugs anyway. You're always going to have thugs, you're always going to have criminals. But the fact that we have so many in our community, like there's white thugs, there's Asian thugs, there's a Latino thug, but we have like, like all of our kids want to be thugs. Like, all of them. Like, or even the ones that don't want to be thugs, that's because they, they ain't tough enough. They try, but they can't cut it. Everybody want to be a gangster, a hoodlum, or something in our community, one of the young people in our community. He doesn't care why. They, how they got like that. He doesn't care what the, what the policies were, all that stuff. He does not care. Put them in jail. That doesn't sound like a good person to me. A good person would be like, damn, that's messed up. I'm a Democrat. Our policy screwed up your community. It's jacked up what we did to your community. But we still got to put you in jail. He says he doesn't care. We must make the streets safer. I don't care why someone is a malefactor in society. I don't care why someone is antisocial. I don't care why they become a sociopath. We have an obligation to cordon them off from the rest of society, try to help them, try to change the behavior. That's why we do in this bill. We have drug treatment and we have other treatments to try to deal with it. But they are in jail. Away from my mother, your husband, our families. But we would be being, we would be absolutely stupid as a society if we didn't recognize the condition that nurtured those folks still exist. And we must deal with that. And I think there's a consensus among Republicans in that. Old barbed wire Republican conservatives just want to hang them high. I mean, that just doesn't sound like a good guy to me. I, I, I'm sorry, man. Like I know he got a he's a Democrat, but just saying you a Democrat don't absolve you of anything. You can't just club me upside my head and be like, oh yeah, well I'm a Democrat. Oh yeah, all right, man. Well, it's all right. That's okay. It didn't really hurt that bad because you're a Democrat. Like black people, we gotta start thinking, man. Like. And he said these things when he was in his 50s. This ain't stuff he said when he was a young man. He, he was in his 50s when he said this stuff. And he still believes that. He in, in, in last year, he defended his crime bill. You got to understand, too. Last year, he defended it. It's not like he's now like, well, you know, I shouldn't have did that. Last year, he defended it. Because you know you have the black people, well, he did that. That was back in the 90s, man. He a changed man, man. Last year, he defended it and was actually like, like, yeah, like what? Like what? Yeah, yeah, I did it. And what? And what? And what? Oh. And? Two men, like I didn't even see color. I just seen a father that dealt with what I dealt with before me, and I felt his embrace and I felt his sincerity. So you thinking um, he, he wants your input on how are we going to, you know, have these conversations? Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. Most definitely. That, that's pretty. I'm exciting. here for it, you know. So yeah, not too long ago, in August. Um, Beanie Siegel was actually in the streets of Philadelphia trying to look for solutions. And, 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 and the situation is bleak in Philly, man. You know, 
they've had almost 30 mass shootings this year. 30 in one city. 30 mass shootings in one city. They've had over 150 kids get shot. 150 kids have been shot in Philadelphia this year. There have been 30 mass shootings. These articles I'm showing you are old. They're from like August and <laughs> September. So the numbers that you're seeing on these articles are, are outdated. It's a very violent city and, and all the suspects are black. And all the victims are black in these mass shootings. Few Puerto Ricans, but other than that. So let's see what Benny Siegel did on this, found out when he went to the streets of Philadelphia. The details on the recent spike in gun violence across the city of Philadelphia. The latest victim, a 17-year-old boy. And tonight, community leaders are taking a stand. Action News reporter George Solis joins us live with the full story. George. Walter, certainly a violent night in Philadelphia. Nearly a dozen shootings in the overnight hours. Just right now, community activists out here in... A dozen shootings overnight. <sighs> Democrat mayor for the last 50 years. Democratic mayors for the last 50 years. Democrats all in the city council. Now you got a Democrat president that's going to fix this? With, dem with more Democrat policies? From the federal level? Because remember, Joe Biden is in, over the federal government. He can't, he can't do, what can he do for Philadelphia? on doors, trying to get a sense, trying to feel the pulse of the community to figure out the root of this problem that's leading to so much unrest and so much of the violence. Now, we arrived here at 59th and Master Street to find a community outraged by the number of violent incidents that unfolded just in the overnight incidents here in Philadelphia. Now, among the crowd, City of Dreams Coalition officials and Philadelphia recording artist Beanie Siegel. This afternoon, they went door to door talking with members of the community about the violence and encouraging others to speak up if they know anything about any of the crimes. Now, the goal here is also to advocate for programs that are available in the community and startups to try and encourage the younger crowd to avoid the streets and potentially a life of crime. Now, the action cam was at some of the more harrowing sites of violence overnight, including the fatal shooting of a 17-year-old man in the 2200 block of West Herald Street. The victim there shot in the chest and rushed to Temple University Hospital, where he was pronounced. Now, back on Master Street, activists are trying to get the word out that enough is enough. What we're trying to do is we're trying to build more recreation centers and more studios and things to give uh, these younger children uh, more uh, things to do and direction. Um, just you heard from our from our black captain, you know, that she was asking for help. How is a black captain scared to come out of her own house? How that doesn't make any sense. And as you heard from their Mimi Siegel encouraging parents to do that, to be more actively involved in their children's lives. He's also in the process of trying to get more music programs. Encouraging mothers, because there's no fathers in these communities. It's all single mothers. Democratic policies. Single mothers, led homes. Go to these Republican-led districts. Go to the red, you know, on election day, we the red, the map, they break it down, the red counties and the blue counties go to them red counties 70 percent to two parent families very little murder very little crime yes crime but very little compared to the democratic places where 78 80 percent single mothers 
You can't do it by yourself. Working jobs, working two, three jobs. You can't supervise your kids. You can't nurture them the way they're supposed to be nurtured when you're doing it by yourself. You're working two, three jobs. Or you're some hood rat. Or some rat. Or some hood chick. And you're passing down those values. Whether you're a good mother or a bad mother, it's going to be hard. Anyone with information about any of the crimes in the city, you're asked to call police. We're allowed now, I'm a little torn by this, man. Any city where you have 400 murders in a year, over 400, where you have 150 kids get shot, you have 30 mass shootings, maybe, maybe I do need a crime bill. Maybe I did elect the right person. Maybe Joe, maybe I do need Joe. To sit, give y'all another crime bill. Joe Biden is defending what many Democrats now see as all but indefensible, the 1994 crime bill. When I wrote the crime bill, which you're, you've been conditioned to say is a bad bill, that bill is now one of the heaviest potential weights around his 2020 candidacy. One of the biggest points of contention is this long-held belief Biden is still holding on to. This idea that the crime bill generated mass incarceration. It did not generate mass incarceration. His rivals have rushed to disagree teeing up a likely conflict at their first debate only three weeks away. That 1994 crime bill, um, it, it did contribute to mass incarceration in our country. Only three weeks away. That 1994 crime bill, um, it, it did contribute to mass incarceration in our country. Well, goddamn, Kamala. <laughs> Really? These politicians, man. Hey, politicians, man. Now she can't. She 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 ain't got nothing bad to say about Biden. She'll work. She, if you a sister, like I said about street dudes, if you a street dude and you can support the guy who inflicted mass incarceration on our community remember people deserve to go to jail for crimes but are certain crimes worth a life sentence or the death penalty selling drugs should you should a, should a 20 year old go to jail for what amounts to a life sentence for selling drugs I don't know just because he's black I mean I don't know takeaway from <laughs> Joe Biden meeting with Freeway <laughs> look man hey if you like it I love it man if y'all like this stuff I love it man I, I don't see anything coming out of it nothing I don't see anything I don't see anything coming out of this it wasn't like what Cuban Trump talked about. Actual things. Look, give up. We, we want this, 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 and that. Like, Cube had a plan. Cube had everything in, 
and, and Cube got so disrespected. Like this, Freeway's not gonna get disrespected for this. Nobody's gonna call Freeway a coon. As a street guy, an admitted drug trafficker. That's why his name is Freeway, because he was a traffic. He was the. He was the. He was the. He was the 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 deliverer. He's very open about this. For him to support Joe Biden is treason. And then they're not talking about anything. Our community. What is? Where's your plan, like you had with the the bullet points? This, 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 this. Everything in writing. Pages and documents. This is what we want. Give us this, 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 and that. Sit down, go over every single step out of it. It just we gonna do something for the community. What the hell? It's nothing. What's going on? This is nothing. Y'all love this stuff, man. I'm out, man. I just can't. And Cube is a coon for meeting with Trump and. Coming up with five hundred billion dollars of stuff now, we not gonna get it now because y'all elected this guy and this guy. Uh, 